In the last video, we integrated Spring Data JPA, and I mentioned that if you're doing just CRUD operations on an entity class, you don't have to implement the data layer. You just use the CRUD repository that comes with Spring Data JPA, and all the typical CRUD operations are automatically handled for you, and you can use the methods directly off the CRUD repository. Now let's look at what those methods are and how we can do the CRUD operations. So first, what I need to do is get the topic repository instance into my topic service so that I can make calls to the topic repository from the service. Uh, the best way to get an instance into a Spring uh, service class is by auto-wiring it. We have done this before. So I'm gonna create a new member variable, a private topic repository. And I'm going to mark this as auto-wired. And now with this, when Spring creates an instance of topic service, it's gonna inject an instance of the topic repository to it. So when I write my methods, I can use the topic repository field uh, knowing that it's there. Now let's do this. Let's replace all these methods to work on the topic, the hardcoded topic instance. I'm gonna switch it to making calls to the topic repository and we'll see what are the methods that we get from the topic repository thanks to it extending the CRUD repository. So let's start with getting all the topics. Right now, I'm just returning this hardcoded list, which is what I've done over here. So I'm going to change this. What I'm gonna do instead is make a call to the topic repository. Let's see what, what are the methods that it comes up with. So I'm going to say topic repository and let's have this Eclipse autocomplete give us the list of methods. You see here, there's this method called find all. That should give you a hint. It's basically getting all the instances from the table. Now, this gets you everything, which is what we need. We want all the topics. So find all is perfect. Now find all is an iterable. So what I need to do is convert this to a list and send this back. Now, just this is all we had to do to connect to the database, run a query to get all the topics, convert each of those rows into topic instances and get it back, right? Find all is doing all that for you automatically. Now, how do I convert this iterable into a list? So I need to create a list. Let me create a list here. So I'm gonna say topics is a new array list. So I'm going to initialize a new array list here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over this. So what I get back over here with find all is an iterable. So I'm going to iterate over this. I think there's a for each. Yeah, there's a for each over here. And uh, what I'm going to do is for each of the elements that it's found, I'm going to put that element into this list. So I'm going to use a method reference here, topic add. So topics rather. So for each of the elements in the iterable, I'm calling the add method on the topics and passing that element. So what I'm doing here is a method reference. If you are new to method references and Lambda expressions, I definitely recommend you check out the Java 8 Lambda basics course on Java Brains, which covers what Lambda expressions and method references are in considerable detail. So in a nutshell, what I'm doing is creating a new topic list, topics list, and uh, I'm iterating over the result of the find all from the topic repository, which is basically an iterable of all the topics in the database. And for each of them, I'm populating this topics list with that element. And now I'm going to return topics. And with this, we have successfully replaced uh, the get all topics. All right, next. Let's change the add topics. How do you add a topic to the database? Now let's see again if the topic repository has a method to do just that. If I scroll down, here you see there is a save method which takes in a generic type. So let's see if this works. Can I pass in the topic? Well, it turns out I can, and this is all I need to do to save a topic to the database.
Again, the topic repository comes with a save method out of the box. If you cannot believe how easy this is, well, trust me, this is all you have to do. So let's run this. I'm going to save this. So right now what we've done is we've updated the get all topics method and the add topic method. So we can run this, add a topic first and do a get all topics to see if that got successfully added. Now, before I run, you might be wondering, well, now where is the database? How do I initialize the database that I'm connecting to? So you don't have to initialize the database for now because look what we're doing over here. We are saying we need an embedded Apache Derby database. So Spring Boot comes with this embedded Apache Derby database. It's gonna add it to the Maven dependencies. So when I start the server, I'm also actually starting an embedded Apache Derby database. And Spring Boot knows that that's what you're gonna to connect to because that's what's available, all right? So you don't have to provide any connection strings, nothing of the sort. We'll connect to an external database later where there is this additional step to tell Spring Boot, hey, connect to that database. But for now, you don't even have to do that. That's just how easy it is. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is stop the server and I'm gonna start this again with uh, running this as a Java application. And now let's make a request to slash topics. This should return an empty list because there's really nothing in the database. Now, what I'm gonna do is make a post request to slash topics. And in my post body, I have a simple op topic object, right? I'm gonna say send. And now I don't get a response back. And if I were to do a get again, well, there you see, it has returned the object that we have saved. I can make one more, you go here, and let's say I call this Java. I'm gonna make a request again, and now if I were to do a get, I should return both JavaScript and Java, which I do. So we are able to successfully connect to the database and make these calls if we've moved away from the hard-coded list. Well, at least for two methods. Now let's look at the other methods. Now we have get topic, which gets one particular topic. Uh, we have update and delete. Let's see what are the corresponding methods in the topic repository, which let us do just that. So I'm gonna take this out and uh, let's see what method it has to get an entity. So we're gonna say topic repository dot well, there's a find one, which takes in a string. Now, why does it take in a string? Because in our topic repository, we mentioned that the ID is a string. So the entity is a topic and the ID is a string. So the topic repository has a find one method, which takes in a string and returns a topic. So what is a string that we need to send? It's an ID, right? So all I need to do is just return that. So topic repository dot find one takes in an ID and returns the topic and our business service just basically returns that. And as you can see, making a call to the database and returning a value is actually easier than returning from a hard coded list, which is, which I find funny. But uh, yeah, that's all, that's all we have to do. All right. So that we have the get topic implemented. Let's look at update topic. Again, I can remove this stuff and uh, Let's see what method topic repository magically has for us. Well, as you can see, we don't have an update method. Now, is this where the magic ends? Do we have to implement it? Well, the good news is no. What you can actually do is use the same method as the add topic and just pass in the updated topic. You might be wondering, well, how does this work? A save can do both an add and an update? Well, it can because you notice what we are doing over here. We are sending it a topic instance and the topic instance has information about what the ID is and what the instance itself is. So the repository knows enough to see if there is already a, a row in the table for that particular ID. So if that row does not exist, then it's gonna do an insert. But if the row does exist, it knows that it needs to do an update. So we don't need two separate methods in the topic repository. 
all I need to do is do a say. So as long as the instance has the ID set on it, I don't even have to pass in the ID, right? All I need to pass in the instance and the topic repository does an insert or an update as necessary. So this is really cool. Let's look at delete topic. Now, what do I have to do to remove a topic? So as you can imagine, there is a method to delete a topic. So let's see, there is a delete here, which takes in an ID and there's also another signature which takes in a topic itself. But what we need here is the ID. So we just pass in an ID to it and it's gonna delete that particular thing. So with this, we are pretty much done. I can remove this hard-coded list finally and we are completely hooked in to the database. None of the hard-coded stuff anymore. So I'm gonna kill the server and uh, start this again. Let's go back, let's go back to our um, postman window. I'm gonna do a get again and you don't see anything here because it's an embedded database. It basically clears everything out when you kill the server. Now I'm gonna make a post request to Java. I'm gonna make another post request to JavaScript. I'm gonna do a get again, which is gonna get me both. I can do a get for a particular URL, which is the get by ID, and it's gonna get me just that ID. I can make a put request to this thing, and the request body contains an updated payload. Let's say I do this, updated Java, and this is the updated Java description. And uh, now if I were to do a get for everything, you see the Java portion has been updated. Now let's say I'm gonna delete JavaScript. So I'm gonna say slash, JavaScript and I'm going to make a delete request. Now, if I were to do a get, JavaScript goes away. So we have the complete CRUD that we implemented with very, very little effort. I had to describe all this stuff to you, but you look at the amount of code that we have written, it's hardly anything. So we just added, so let's, let's summarize what we did, right? To connect to a database. We added the right dependencies in palm.xml, right? Just a couple of dependencies, Spring Data JPA and the Derby. Next, we marked our entity class as an entity class by using a couple of annotations. It was the add entity and the add ID for the member variable, which is gonna to correspond to a primary key column. Next, we implemented an interface. Well, we created an interface rather called topic repository, which extended a repository that came out of the box, which was a CRUD repository. We just gave it the generic elements and uh, that was it. This is all we had to do. And we got all the CRUD operations just like that. And now in our service, we use those methods. We used a find all. This was actually a slightly more complicated than all this other one-liner stuff because this returns an iterable and I had to iterate over it and add it to a, a list that I created over here and return it. But look at all the other methods. Find one, save, delete. All these are methods that kind of came out of the box because we implemented the CRUD repository. So this is this is why I, you know, I find this fascinating, you know, compared to the kind of work that people had to do using JDBC uh, years ago, where they had to write every query manually. This is super easy and very convenient. All right. So in the next video, we're going to see what it takes to actually connect to an external database. So one thing that we did do in this video was use an embedded database just by dropping in this class into the class path. So, you know, when I started the server, I'm also starting an embedded database server. What we would like to do is connect to an external database. It could be Postgres, it could be MySQL. Well, how do you do that with Spring Boot? Let's look at that in the next video.